Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the official All or Nothing podcast. This evening, I'm with the Warden of the North, Kane Barker. Welcome, Kane. How are you doing, Deck? Are you okay? Listen, mate, I'm fantastic. Um, just want to say well done to Dougie Joyce yesterday for the fight. Yeah. He done well. He done well. Fantastic, mate. Fantastic. Now, listen, guys, this is a very serious interview tonight. No fucking about. Um, we're just going to get straight to the nitty gritty. Take it away, Ken. Well, how do we start? <laughs> um, basically, there's been a few uh, things that have been popping up um, over the last coming weeks with all these podcasts. As you know, Decker, uh, we spoke about this. There's been a lot of things with this King Irish, Ian Flannery slash Irish slash fucking Ian Hogan, whatever his name is. Now, he come into the firm through the riffraff. Um, <laughs> I can't even think of how he come onto the firm. Uh, he come on, obviously he's a talker, as everyone can see, a big talker. Now, he's got the gift of the gab, but it wasn't long before, obviously, the crack started to come in his lies and he got through out the fucking door. Now, since he's been thrown out the door, like, you've done a podcast with him, Decca. You know, we allowed that to go up, let him bow out gracefully. He went on and done one with KRN TV. Um, obviously, we didn't have nothing to do with that. And, you know, there's been a lot of things that have come out. Now, tonight, we're going to touch on some subjects of what the, what sort of man this is. Now, the sort of man that's come out, you know, he done a few wrongs to the boys and he got sent on his way. Now... And he got left at that and he was allowed to do his podcast with you, Decker, as you know. Now, since then, things have come out that me and my me and my brothers and my friends are not happy with to, for him to be on our videos. Now, there's a lot, a lot of videos on the internet of this man uh, with us and there's too much to take down, as you know yourself, Decker. So the whole point of this tonight is just to expose him and let everybody know he's not a part of our firm. He was literally on the table for fucking two weeks and got sent packing back down the road. And off the back of off the back of his his uh, podcasts, he's going about the extortionists and this and that, and and he's betraying us all to be gangsters and things we're not. And like the warden of the north, that is. Let me just explain this. The warden of the north is a private joke. Me and my brothers and friends had on about the Game of Thrones. He's brought that up on himself and started giving me that title on his podcast. I am not a gangster. None of my brothers are gangsters. None of my friends are gangsters. We're just just straight kids that have come from nothing trying to make a bit of something, you know, trying to make a bit of fucking coin. That's all we're trying to do. We don't portray to be gangsters. We're all family men. We're all trying to make a bit of money, trying to get rich. That's all we're trying to do and trying to live life the best way we can. And then you've got guys like him that are up and down, extortion this, extortion that. The kid's never extorted nobody in his life, you know. He tells people he got shot nine times up his legs and this and that. He fell off a fucking motorbike, you know. There's going to be there's gonna be a guest coming on tonight. And this guest is, she's going to she's gonna bring some, some, some naughty stuff to the table about this man. I'm very sickened to even... To be even be on the same video, same room as this man after what this girl's got to say. Yeah. But yeah, I'm glad you've uh, we've got the opportunity, Deco, to. Uh, thank you, mate, Ken. Yeah. Listen, thank you very much. I mean, at the end of the day, um, what we're going to do is now, I'm going to show everybody a clip of the well, the introduction to the podcast when I yeah. first done the interview with Flannery. Okay. Not ready yet, guys. It's not ready yet. Um, but listen, um, like I say, Ken, um, the things that I'm hearing, mate, it isn't good. It's not good. Um, no. like I say, this isn't trolls, guys. This isn't trolls. I have seen Ken seen pure facts, paper, statements. Am I right, Ken? Yeah, 100 percent right there, Deck. I think we've all been uh we've all had a bit of trolling, haven't we? Especially over these last couple of weeks with uh Dougie's fight. And um, everything all over the internet. We've all been at Decca, you've had trolls, you know, and that's what they are, the little keyboard warriors. This is not a troll. This is far from a troll. This is this is a, an individual 
with paperwork, with every I've Deco, we've both seen it all. You know, his statements, his orders. There's a lot, you know, and it sickens me to, you know, I've had this man in my house, you know, I've had him in my car, I've had him around around all my family, I've had him in my sister's house, my sister's cooked for him. You know, we've done, we brought him into the podcast when you come and done the podcast on Dougie. Um, you know, he's, he's an, ang- he's an ang- hanging person, a very, very hanging person, this man. And, you know, these things that are going to shock the world, the guy's just a fraud, sir. It is what it is, you know. He's not an extortionist. He can't have a fight. He's not a gangster. Do you know? You know when? Let me just touch on this a minute, Deco, because it is annoyed. It, uh, well, it's not annoyed me, but it's just it's a bit of a joke. We're not gangsters, yeah. You know when you when you when you talk of a gangster, when when people talk of gangsters, you think of East End gangsters. That's how I think of it. Anyway, you think of an old old nineteen sixties, nineteen seventies, eighties sort of type of gangster. That's how I'd portray a gangster. You know, this man is not a gangster. He's no modern-day Robin Hood, and he's far from a fucking Chopper Reed. You know, he's a fucking prankster. That's what he is. And tonight, I am going to expose, and he's not called Ian Flannery. He's called Ian Hogan. Ian Flannery is a divert from Ian Hogan because Ian Hogan is his real name, and that's what all this stuff he comes up when you put it on the internet of what he's been doing, you know, and that's that. And we're out here to expose him. Well, I'm out here to expose him because I don't yeah. want, I don't want the public looking at us and me and my friends and my brothers, you know, and thinking, how are these these men? You know, we've got we've got a bit of respect. I'm not saying we're anything special because we're not. We're just we're just guys, you know. And we've got we've got a bit of respect, and we don't want to be we don't want to be seen looking looking to be with people like him. I don't know whether you're seeing that when you, the podcast that I don't read. Um... Ian Hogan, Ken. At the end, I mean, there's a lot of fuss made by this by Hogan when well, I says at the end. Sorry, I don't know whether you noticed this, Ken. At the end of the podcast, when I says it's up to the viewer to decide whether he's real or fake. Yeah, I love that. I love that. If I'm being honest, I didn't watch the whole thing. I did click on it because curiosity got the better of me, and I think I watched about. I think I watched about thirty minutes of it. If twenty-eight minutes, thirty minutes. If I'm being honest. And then I watched the end of it, and I loved that clip. I thought it was, I thought it was, it was a good little twist. Now, if we're being honest, Deco, answer me this, and I think a lot of people will want to know as well. What do you, what did you make of him? Don't know the truth. When we first went into the house, when we went to this secret location, I mean, to me, it was in the middle of nowhere, and we went in. And straight away, it was kind of rehearsed. He was like, Decker, say this, say that. And I says to John, the thing is, when I do these podcasts, Kane, it's real. It's yeah. raw. I can't be bothered with all this scripted bullshit. I speak from the heart. I say it how it is. Yeah. And when I went, in that fucking, I went in that podcast with him, and it was all, say this, say that, say I've been with black women, say I'm fucking, I'm an extortionist. It was all scripted from him. It's all scripted. It's all rehearsed. He's, he thinks he's in a fucking movie, mate. You know, and that's exactly what it is. You know, when you come, you might do a bit of trailer in and a bit of build up to your podcast to 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 generate the interest in it. But having fucking drones put on and all that and say this and say that, fucking hell, he might as well have been in a movie, eh? <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, though. I'll give him. He'd get a fucking Oscar for that. Yeah, he would get an Oscar. Yeah, <laughs> I did say this. He wants to fucking. <laughs> He wants to stop signing on the dole and go and get a job. <laughs> An actor. Ready? For the clip now. Um, well, let's uh, get to the to the nitty gritty now, mate. Um, okay. If um, victim number one wants to come on and start speaking, um, she's welcome to come on. Just wait, I've sent the link. Anybody coming on? Victim number one, can you uh, click on the link, please? Yeah. Have we got her coming through? Here she is. Hello. 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 Hello.
I'm here. Yeah. How are you doing? So I'm fine today. Actually, it's probably a, the happiest moment I've had now, being able to speak about something that no one knows about, and they think this different character of someone. So, well, listen. Let me just say this, darling. Obviously, we said we'll keep your uh, name quiet, you know, and it's our pleasure for for you to get your story out and let let the whole fucking world know about your situation and what's happened with you yeah. and how much of a fraud this man is. That's fine, yeah. So do you want to just tell the viewers, um, just tell, tell the viewers a bit about you first um, and how you come to meet Mr. Hogan? So for anybody watching, he's older than me by five years. I've got my life together. I've got a job. I've been working since I was in my teens. And I come across him through a friend of a friend, so he was in the Birmingham area. And he seemed nice at first. You know, comes around, he's got his money on him. You go places, you know, bowling, cinema, yeah. normal places you'd call it. Give it two weeks in, that's when you started to see cars pulling up with random people. I'm an extortionist, I'm a drug dealer, I'm big on the roadside. He started speaking in Patois because... I'm mixed with black, so I don't know if it's because he's got a fascination with black people or he wants to be black, but he started to really engulf on being black and speaking like in Patra to me, telling me about bashment music, telling me he's got loads of black friends, trying to get in with my family, begging to meet my mom, begging to meet my nan and my family because they're Irish and he swears blind in red in Ireland on the gypsy side, he swears he's from one town. But after doing some research and digging of my own, he's a full-on fraud. He's not from Tipperary. He's not from Limerick. And he was read up as a gypsy. There's nothing wrong with gypsies, but he denies it to the fullest. He's not an extortionist. He's not Flannery. His name's Ian Hogan. And there's a lot more to him. There's se sexual aspects where he's forceful. He's a nonce. He goes for younger girls, requests nudes off them. He don't have money. He's on the dole. He doesn't have kids all over the city or the country. He's got two kids, of which he can't see both of them because he's been abusive to both mothers. He's been abusive to women. If you was to be in a relationship with him like I was and use Claire's law, you'd be able to see all his charges for sexual offences, harassment, rape, yeah. violence against women, violence against his partner. He's had to pay victim charges. He's been to court. He gets barred from cities, not because he's an extortionist and he's bad. It's all because he hits women and abuses them. I've had fatal injuries from him, which included breaks to the hand, fingers. Can you and just, can you do, can, can we just, can you just go, thank you for that, for just telling yeah, us how we feel about. Okay. Can we just go into the subject here? This, the scenario with you and him, you know what I'm on about, what happened between yeah. you? So, okay, so just for the viewers, just for the viewers, basically this this lady has uh, been wooed by him, basically, and obviously she's come into a relationship. Now, would you just like to tell the viewers what happened on that night, that time yeah. with Ian Hogan? So I got into a relationship with him. It was going fine, and then I started to see the little things like the no money and the behaviour that he had, and he was sponging off people. So I ended it off. And I went out to a nightclub, was single, wasn't in a relationship, didn't know he was going to be in the nightclub. He was grooming girls that were 19 that have already got kids. Some of them are pregnant. He got two of them pregnant. Won't mention their names for safety reasons because we don't know what he's like, where yeah. he is right now. But he lured them to the nightclub and I've went in there and I've seen one and she's waved at me. One of them's a mutual friend of mine. One of them wasn't. And I asked her what she was doing there. So I was spun around and I've seen him in a booth. And he's staring at me. And as if you've seen him on his podcast with Decker, you'll see he's got piercing blue eyes. And he's got like this yeah. deathly stare. He was staring. And I was at the bar getting a drink. And someone was next to me that was a male. And I wasn't even talking to him. So when I've looked back, he weren't there. So I took my heels off and I started running. And when I got to the stairs of the club, the very narrow and skinny, he pulled me back by my hair and bent my hat back. And I had false nails on. So they've all popped off and my nails are bleeding. And I'm pushing him off. So I went outside the nightclub and he's still trying to attack me. And out there, he whacked me with a bottle. So I continued walking away because at that point, you've got adrenaline and you're thinking, what the fuck? So I've walked to my car and he's followed me into my car. And I'm thinking, okay, 
and I'm saying, get out, look, what are you doing? And he's like, look, you're a dirty slag, you're a slap rent, you use loving it, making all these guys think you're single, which I was, wasn't with him, and it's been ages since I've been with him at this point, didn't have any contact with him. So he wouldn't get out the car, and I wouldn't go home at this point because he's made a scene. I'm driving, he won't get out the car, the doors are locked, I'm driving. He hits me in my face with his fist, and I hear a crack. But I didn't know about my injuries until afterwards. So I'm carrying on driving. Got adrenaline that's still kicking in. And he's whacking my head. So then I've got adrenaline now. I'm angry. So I'm hitting him back. And I've hit his head into my dashboard. And the whole entertainment system's shattered at the front. So he's going back and forth with me. Meanwhile, I'm driving. And he's attacking me. He's hitting me. He's hitting me. He's hitting me. He's hitting me. And I'm thinking at this point, fuck this. I'm probably going to end up dead. And then he's whacking me. And he's saying stuff to me. And he's telling me that I'm a whore. And that I enjoyed this. And then when I've got closer, I didn't know who he's went to the club with. So I've ended up by Northfield now and I've pulled the car over because when the adrenaline wore off, I couldn't move my hands. And he's grabbed me by my hair and he's held me down. And then I felt sharpness in my back. And I thought, now I'm dreaming, I'm fucking dreaming. And when I've lifted up and touched my neck, it's bleeding. So he's put a blade through the back of my neck and he's kept trying to go at it to get through it. So I don't know if he was trying to be a murderer at this point or trying to hack through it just to give me a mark. But he went for it and then went for my arm and then went back to my face. And then when I got back up, I couldn't move my left arm to drive. So I got out of my car and left my car. And there was by, there was bystanders outside. So all of this from the start on footage from me leaving because it's in the town centre. But when I got to Northfield when he was attacking me, there's no cameras and there's just people. And because there was a bystander coming past the bus stop, he ran off and left. So I didn't know this when it was happening. But somebody came in overnight. I don't know if it's a girl he knows around the area. So when the police turned up, because the bystander found the police, he was already in somebody's house hiding. And the police have turned up. I've got injuries to my head, my face, my back, you know, can't do anything. So I've gone into an ambulance. At first, they sat me up and tried to, like, cover my wounds over and stop the bleeding. The police have followed into the hospital. And then when they looked at my neck, I got put in a neck brace and took to the QA hospital in Birmingham. I don't live in Birmingham either. So I'm in the QA. The police are coming in one after the other after the other asking questions and I'm saying I don't remember because too much is going on and I don't really, I'm not someone who talks to the police, never yeah. been. So yeah. I'm in the cubicle at this point and I've been kept in overnight. When I open my eyes in the daytime, I get a withheld number and he's saying to me, he's going to come to the hospital and he's going to get me again. And I'm saying to my aunt spoke to the police and then he's saying to me, if I take the piss with him, I've got to get kidnapped all the way up to Coventry with him where he bases or he's going to fight flying me back over to Ireland so I'm away from all contact so that was only one incident and then from there he persisted to come to my house and try and attack me and then threaten my family members so it all spiraled out of control once I wasn't with him but with him he's like someone who likes to be dominant and in control but he's got no way of doing that because he's got no money no life yeah. no background and nothing here but his kids that he don't see or look after you remember uh, when we were speak sorry to interrupt you you know when we yeah. were speaking the other day there was an incident um there was an incident that come off the back of that, what we were talking about, um, where he'd held you captive uh, for 13 hours. Oh, yeah, Kane. But in one of those situations as well, so even down to adding off the back of what you're saying, yeah. so there was a situation where he did keep me and told me I'm not going nowhere. And I don't know what he carries, but he's always got a night gym bag and he was saying that he was going to put acid in the bath and put me in it. But I didn't go into that bathroom and I weren't getting put in the acid. Luckily, I didn't. But he did take bits of my hair out while pulling my hair. And he wanted to set me a light in the bath while he's put the acid or pneumonia, what he's trying to tell me he's putting in the bath. And he kept hitting me repeatedly, putting his hand up my throat. I was getting my head hit off the wall, off the door. He wouldn't let me out of my room. He wouldn't let me eat. He wouldn't let me go in my kitchen. And if my nan or someone rang, he'd dive over and he'd literally restrain me from getting to my phone. And People are probably listening to this thinking, oh, what a pussy, but the man's on steroids. He sits in the mirror and cries because he can't... Let me, let me just stop you. Let me just stop you. No one's listening to this thinking, what a pussy or anything like that. At the end of the day, you're a woman and he's a man. Now, we all have we all have domestics. We all have arguments. Um, some of them arguments can get heated, but there's difference between getting a heated argument with your other half and just battering him, basically. And that's what anybody can see. That's what's going on. Yeah. Um, carry on, sorry, Vic, come on. Carry on, carry on with that conversation because there's a point where I want you to touch. I don't want to, I don't want to ask you direct. Yeah. I want you to yeah. come out of it yourself. Kane, it wasn't even like it was a 
relationship argument. It was like, he comes there, he chats shit, he don't get his own way, he's broke, he's got no money, so he starts on ya. And I've, as I said, I've always had a career and a job. And if I didn't give in to him or give him money, <clears throat> I'll get attacked by him. And yeah. when he was there as well, sexually a predator. What do you mean by that? So, put it this way. If you don't want sex with this man, he'll persist until he gets it. And if you don't give it him, he'll get it by himself. So and I don't, I'm not we'll, we'll let we'll let the viewer we'll let the viewers take yeah. their own. I'm, not, own being, thing I'm not being funny, Kane. I can see comments popping up saying people know him and people whatever, and you know, I'm not saying there's dispute in what I'm saying, but they don't Listen, know. Darling, I don't give a shit for any viewer that thinks they know this man. Yeah, any mm -hmm. viewer that thinks this man is a bad man or he's a gangster or all I'm fucking comment, I don't care. If anyone's got anything to say about this live podcast. Come and see me. But you know what? You can contact okay, Decker. Okay, okay, you can Kane. contact someone my here, Instagram. Kane. Someone on, here, Kane. someone here says that this man left Ireland. His name's Ian Flannery. I'm not being yeah, rude to you yeah. as a comment, but you don't know him because when you use Claire's law, his name is Ian Hogan. There's no mm -hmm. Flannery. He changed it on his prison number ID, on his tattoo, on his arm, with his prison number. But if you see it, it says Ian Hogan. So I don't care. I'm not being rude. Even though you're from Ireland, his name's not Ian Flannery. That's his father's name. He was reared up by his mum. His father wasn't there. And he's got his mum's last name. And he's got other siblings. And if his family yeah. know about him and say, stay away from him as a danger, you can't be telling me otherwise, because I've seen it myself. I only use Claire's law to find out what he's charged with for, because I thought it was a bit... Um, falsified when he kept saying extortion and when I went to look into it and I got the list of it everything was for abuse, sexual charges, domestic violence so if anybody wants to say he's this big bad man or he's something that they think he's, he's not until you've been in domestics with him or a relationship, you do not know this man, he don't well, show his friends or the guys that he's around what he does Let me just say this um, for anyone that thinks Ian Hogan is a big bad man, Ian Hogan isn't a big bad man I've had I, I've had him around me a lot over the last couple of months, um, up until two or three weeks ago. Um, now, Easter Sunday, Easter weekend to be exact, and he ain't a bad man. He doesn't think he's a bad man, especially around real men. Yeah. He's calm. Decker, you've seen this. We've done a oh, lot, a lot. Yeah. We've covered a lot of hours videoing. You've seen this. He's... Humble around real men, and you know, men like that are just bullies. They think they can portray themselves to be this big I am to women. Some of the stuff that this girl has touched on is he's sickening. You know, half of that stuff there, you can hear the passion in her voice. You know, this isn't a fabricated story, this isn't a troll. This is a woman that has had years of abuse off this man. She's tried yeah. to escape him numerous times, and she's just made up. She she doesn't get now out of this. She's just made up that she's letting the country know what sort of man he is, letting all the women know, listen, this man is a predator. You know, there's a 19-year-old girl from this girl's area, victim one's estate, um, where she's from. A 19-year-old girl. You know, we're all grown men. We're all big men, Deco. We're all 30-year-old men, you know. 29. <laughs> you know, 29, 30-year-olds, you're still a grown-ass man, you know. Yeah. What, 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 what business have you got with a 19, 21, 20 year old woman? You know, these are children. You know, He's asking them for nude pictures and stuff, and everybody gets the same set of pictures. When I've spoke to other females that have reached out, they've all got the same set of pictures that I've had from years ago, which it no longer looks like before the man bun, before the gold teeth. Before yeah. all of that, they've got them old pictures. Before let's, 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 let's stop here, Deco, and let's let's put a clip up. Let's show the let's show the viewers. Let's show the viewers some little bits. John says the um, the thing isn't working, Kenzie. We can't show the clips. Right? Can we not show the pictures? Can we put the picture no. up? No, but we do. I have. I know which picture you're on about. There's a picture with him with two children where he's got no tattoos. Can you not like... the children's face out, Deck, and just put it up. <laughs> can't put it up, Ken. Right, well, basically, let me just say this to the viewers. There's a picture that come up of Ian Hogan with no tattoos, no perm on his head, what he says are natural curls, no Jamaican heritage, is a white Irishman with slick back 
no gold teeth, no tattoos. Ten years ago, he left Ireland, and he left Ireland. He was in private schools, universities, studying science. He was a straight kid. This kid looked like a sharp kid, a clever kid. You know, he's educated well, and he come to England to be to become an East End gangster. He said because he's obsessed with England gangster movies. This kid is just an utter fraud. You know, and that's it. Victim one, obviously, I don't want to expose your name. I appreciate you coming on the show with us tonight. Thank you very yeah. much, love. I'm glad you got, no, glad you got your story across. That's fine. I'm pretty sure any other victim can vouch and have similar stories and similar encounters because he goes around doing it to all the women. And as once you're a woman, in his eyes, it's power because he's a man on steroids. Yeah. More. yeah. Just Can I just say something? He was, he was a victim number two. Is she there with you at the moment? Let me just go to a hold on. Just get a bit on her story. Tell you what, Ken, um, you, we could be double hosting this show the way you're going on here. Well, Decker, I told you uh, the other day, I'm, I'm, happy, I'm happy to sponsor Decker. I'll do this one and the one on my dad and I'm happy to sponsor, that's it. No, but, well, like I say, Ken's, Ken's business has become a sponsor of the All or Nothing podcast, so as, thank as, you very as, much. As yeah. getting the stuff ready to come on and as ready to speak, so as the stuff out and as coming in, but thank you for your time, and honestly, I don't know if anyone's going to take heed of what's being said, but people have been warned, and if they go there with him and it ends up happening to them, I'm not being horrible, but I'm not sorry, because we're telling you, yeah. and if you don't believe it, then you don't believe it. But there's pictures and proof, and if we could put them up on air, we would, because he's done some sick shit. We are, we appreciate you coming on, and okay, like well. said, if you you can only you can only tell people your experiences. You know, people can hear the passion in your voice. You know, um, we're glad to be able to hear your story, darling. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers, Mark. Cheers, bud. As just sorting out her phone. Not a problem, darling. So, Decker. Yeah. Just while we're waiting for victim two to come on, how are we looking for our next week? I'm good. We're um, we're going to do an interview about your dad's documentary. Yeah. We're going to be doing a uh, well a documentary podcast about the legend Wayne Barker of Manchester. Yes. I'm looking forward to it. I am. I am. I'm looking forward to it. You know, his story's been out with Bernard O'Mahony. I don't think he got the credit he deserved. He got yeah. 18 minutes and it was cropped up and chopped up. We're going to do a raw, raw, all over the country uh, documentary on my father. He's 10 years, he's deaf, he's next year. So we're going to drop it next year for his 10 year anniversary. But this month is a special month. On the 14th of this month was actually my father's passing date. So we're going to do a little hour, maybe hour and a half. With Decker and John um, at the grave, and we're just we're gonna do we're gonna give you a little preview of what what's to come next year. Yeah, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it, mate. It's gonna be a uh, especially this month. There's a lot of good things coming up, so all you guys watching, tune in because there's some really good content coming. Decker, up. can you walk Hello, out and send the link? It's not letting her use that link. Can you resend it? Could we get John to resend the link, Decker? It's not letting you use it. Can John yeah. send it to you, Ken, and you send it? I've forwarded it to her and it's not letting her in. One sec. I haven't got this other lady's number, Decker. Yeah. Hello. She's in. Are you there, John? Are you there, victim two? I am, yes. Is this I'm victim two or victim one? Yeah. Victim two now. Victim two. Right. Just, just a quick one to introduce you to the viewers. You just spoke to Victim 1. Um, I have had a few conversations today and yesterday with Victim 1, as a Decker has. Um, I haven't had a conversation with you, darling, so I don't mean to sound rude. No, that's fine. Uh, but do you want to just tell the viewers your story and your your view on Mr. Hogan? Yeah, I've spoke to your brother um, quite regular. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm the latest girlfriend, um, the one who is taking him to trial. All right. Um, yeah, so um, there's been a lot going on. Um, sexual charges, domestic charges, he's blew my vehicle up. Um, 
I'm not even living at home. We're being safeguarded um, until trial. So, yeah, he's destroyed my life in nine months, really. But um, I'm getting there with the help of all you guys. So I can't thank you enough, to be honest. No problem. Don't be daft. It's our pleasure to help you. One million percent. Yeah, yeah. And obviously now I only knew all this was false, which was why I was so petrified. Um, once I got in charge, that's when I found out all his previous charges were on women. And obviously all these girls that have come forward breaks my heart because they're, they're a lot younger than me. Um, luckily, I've got a good unit around me to help me get through it. So, Yeah. yeah. Let me just stop you there, darling. I don't mean to be rude. They cried froze here, I think, on my side. Yeah. You all, I can see you clearly, Ken. Can everyone see me moving, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Right, well, it's just froze on my screen. That's not a problem. Sorry, darling. Carry on. Yeah, all right. Um, I mean, I've had a lot of his ex-partners and girls um, get in touch with me. Um, a lot of them are still too scared to come forward. Um, but obviously, my outcome now is to make sure it doesn't happen to anybody else. Um, we're all lucky to be here. I was the one he held hostage for 13 hours. Um, I was beaten. I was strangled. I was tried to be drowned, stripped naked, did what he did to me. And then he stroked me for six hours, saying he's gentle now. Luckily, I escaped in the morning. Drove home, no clothes on. Um, couldn't even see. My face was that battered, um, just degraded. Um, went he, to the police. He held you, sorry, love, he, he held you hostage for 13 hours? Yeah, he wouldn't let me end the relationship. Said he owned me. I was his woman. If any other man touched me, he'd splash them and sell my vagina off. Um, I had a brand new E-class Mercedes. He blew it up with me and my children in the house asleep. He sent three yeah. men to my house. Um, just literally terrorised me. Sorry, let me just stop you there, please. Decor, yeah. um, sorry, darling. I did, oh, actually get you, I did actually get you confused with victim one. Yeah. Um, so that this is a 13-hour thing, Deco. But yeah, sorry, yeah. Uh, Deco, can we send Johnny Joyce the link, I'm please? Send him it now. Tell him we're sending him it now. Johnny, yeah. he'll be on soon. Sorry, darling, go on. No, no, it's all right. Obviously, I was worried because I knew he was up Manchester before you guys, so I thought... He was saying he was going to um, shut my mouth before trial and all this. Um, so, obviously, that's why I spoke out. And I thought, they don't even know what this guy is about. Um, obviously, I used to have one of his sons. He doesn't even like him. He doesn't have nothing to do with him. He only wanted to see me and the children. Bullies both mums. He's not even allowed to see the second one. So, And I did go to Ireland with him. And his mum said, uh, cried and said, get away from him. He's a monster. And she hadn't saw him for 15 years. So, that's when things started dropping. Yeah. Wouldn't let me be in front of men on my own, wouldn't let me speak, isolated me. Like I stopped going around anyone because he'd threatened to kidnap my family. So I was just trapped. But in the end, it got to the point where I thought I weren't going to see my kids again. So I, w I did go to the police and luckily the char CPS charged him there and then with seven charges. Well, I'm glad you got the justice you deserved, yes. first of all. Um, second of all, this guy is not he's not with us, he's not one of us, as, as you've seen, but obviously the podcast and the videos portray something different. That is the main yeah. reason for tonight, just to let everybody know. Yeah. Can um, I say one thing, guys? Go on, sorry, Deck. After tonight, I just want to let everybody know that his podcast will be taken down. Brilliant. That'll do. It's gone. It's gone. We can't promote shit like that. No, like literally, all that he's got on from his jumpers to his Valentinos, I bought him them. Um, another ex girlfriend of his, who's also part of my trial, she paid for his teeth. He's so false, he's got nothing. When I first met him, he used to run around with a suitcase. Um, he lives in a little shitty bando in Coventry. He's got fuck all. I felt sorry for him, it was the sob story. He's got nobody, whatever else. And I, I've got a big heart, I'll help anybody, you know. But um, once, once he was in, that was it, then like, you know. And obviously, I've got to put my kids first, and I've just got to do what I've got to do and make sure it doesn't happen to anybody else. Well, that's what we're here for today. We've broadcasted both the stories just to let every woman know in the country, you know, what sort of man this is. He's not an extortionist. He's not a gangster. You know, he's a fucking idiot. And no, he's a rapist. He's a rapist. Well, there you go. Yeah. And you've heard, that, you've heard that from the horse's mouth. The he isn't a troll. You know, these two women... Yeah, yeah. Right? Now, I've... I've said that we'll keep their as victim and one and victim two just to save the name. But these two women are not trolls. They're not making stories up. They, you know, they've sent us all the proof over. 
it's bad. It's bad. Well, listen, darling, thank you very much for coming on thank the show. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you for giving us your time and your story. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye. Thank you, darling. Thank you. Bye. I mean, I'd just like to say one thing, Kane. I mean, we're talking, we could be talking the Irish version of fucking Ted Bundy here. Fucking Ted Bundy, you took the words right out of my mouth, mate. You know, I'm ill as a dog that I've even, I've had this man in my car. You know, I had someone, I had someone text me today, like, fucking hell, mate. I thought that was Isaac's, uh, Irish's RX6. You know, this, this, this man's been in my kitchen, mate, with my kids. Listen, I want to say one thing to everybody watching this. I'm no mug. Right, when I walked into that interview, as the interview went on, now you've got to remember, this guy claimed to be with you boys. So when I'm yeah. doing this interview, during the interview, I knew this guy was speaking shit. Because you can fucking tell during the interview, I'm like, yeah, yeah. And I could tell it didn't add up all this, or I've never made a legal penny in the, in, in the UK, but I'm walking about with fucking loads of money. Yeah. But then he's trying and he's getting pulled over the fucking searches. <laughs> he was actually getting pulled over the fucking non-charges. Fucking hell. But, um, yeah, definitely. The, I mean, this title should, of this live should be the Irish version of fucking Ted Bundy. Ted Bundy, definitely that. But listen, let me tell you something. Why isn't Johnny Joyce come on to this? He asked for this... Oh, uh, but we've sent him the link. Has he received the link? Because he's not come up. It was ten minutes ago now. What's he saying? He's not clicking it. Johnny, do you want to click the link, mate, so you can jump click on? Link. Click, click the link on WhatsApp, Johnny. John sent you it on WhatsApp. Um, yeah, so we've touched base there. We've done what we needed to do. Yeah. We've, um, I want to tell you one thing, Kane, on, on, a, on, on a serious note. I'm considering having you as a joint host on one of my podcast shows. <laughs> well, I'm all ears, Decor. I'm all ears. <laughs> How much do you charge? <laughs> well, I'm fucking expensive. I've got big bills. <laughs> um, no, I'm only joking. Let's um, let's just try and get him on here because it'd be good to get him on. Are we getting anywhere, John? Or is he is he not joined yet? No. Because John's John's keeping an eye on all the on the activity on the channel, mate. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, all we need is Johnny to click the link that we've been sent on the WhatsApp, and it'll be right on. Right, we've got another thirty minutes, Deck. How do we want to go about it? What do you want to talk about? What do you want to cover? Um, do you know what it is, mate? We've got eight hundred and fifty, eight hundred and sixty people watching this, and I just want to say to everybody that supports the channel, thank you very much. Because do you want to know something? When I got into the podcast game, I didn't get into this game to take part or to make up the numbers. I came into this game to take over. I like That's what it. I did. But I'm also not in competition with anybody because I know this podcast is completely different to anything else anybody's doing. Do you know what I mean? 100%. Yeah, Let, me tell you Let me tell you something. You see, everyone's got their own opinions and they're all like assholes. They stink as shit. Simple as that. You know, you've got, right, you've got the first, you've made history, Deco, with this podcast. Dougie Joyce allowed you to make history with this podcast. And it's as simple as that. you got the first live stream podcast on a bare knuckle gypsy fight, you know? And it, regardless of what everybody's opinion, regardless of what anybody says, there was two very, very good men. They'd done a long training camp. They got to it. They had a fight. He was fighting for 140 minutes, yeah. an hour and 40 minutes. You know, regardless of anybody's opinion, people, keyboard warrior, I've, I've wanted to say a lot on this subject, yeah, but I've kept my mouth yeah. shut. I've kept my mouth shut. But half of these people that chat shit, in fact, 99.9% .9 of these people that chat shit and give it all this and all that, get down there and do it yourself. Yeah. Get down there and stand there for an hour and 45 minutes with either one of them men. And tell me, tell me yourself. You know, the thing is, Ken, and, and you got, you got that deco. You got it live yeah. stream. I said yeah. to you last, I said to you last month when we was talking. Eighteen months from now, you'd be the biggest um, podcast. And and generally believe it. The way you're going, the content you're covering, the people you're covering. You're a real man. You know, you don't take the piss and disrespect people. You know, you're a genuine guy. The thing is, Ken, right? 
People ain't watching a pussy podcast host that's never had a fight in his life. I have been in there. I've done it. I've fought for one hour. I've had fights. I've had bare knuckle fights. Yesterday, them two lads were tough, hardy men. So anybody that comes on social media slagging them off, oil, it was a dancing contest. Do you know what it's like to prepare a mental battle for a fight? You can, you can say it's a dancing contest all the time. Oh, any, one of them men, any one of them yeah. men, the fit, strong young men, they've trained the fucking hearts out for that fight. Any one of them men could have jumped in fast and been knocked out fast. Any one of them. They've both got a band, yeah. they're both fit young men. You know, so yeah. forget all that type talk about, oh, it was a dancing contest, it was this and that. It'd be a fucking running contest for half of them, mate, because none of them would stand yeah. and fight. It's as simple but, as that. Um, one thing I do want to, I want to reiterate this tonight to everybody watching, that this Flannery's, Hogan's, Ted Bundy's podcast will be taken down after this live with Kane. And that's a promise to the victims and to the, all the people out there. Yeah. We will not do more to scumbag like that. One million percent. And obviously, there's a lot. There is a lot. His, his podcast will be getting took down. And you've just heard it from the horse's mouth. 100%. But there is a lot of videos that he is still on with me and with our with our firm, with my brothers, you know, which you can't come down because there's too many of them. But his main one will be coming down. Christian at KRM TV. It's entirely up to you if you want to keep your documentary on. This is a message to all the other podcasts out there. Do not interview this man. Do not give this man publicity, fake bullshit, making out that he's something that he's not. Don't give this man a platform and disrespect these women that have came forward about him. Simple as. And if well, you man, continue, listen, listen, he's had his five minutes of fame. Now he's got his lifetime of shame. It's as simple as that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's talked the talk for weeks. He's big this sell up. He said he wants to be famous. Now he's going to be famous as the Irish Ted Bundy. For the wrong, all the wrong reasons. <laughs> yeah. You know, Ted don't Bundy play with fire if you don't want to get burnt. Hey. Don't play with fire if you don't want to get burnt. Well, that's it. And Let me is, just you know, say the guy. The guy, the, guy put, the guy put something on. Now, I did want it on. Obviously, there's been some technical issues... Uh, in the back end there, guys, so we couldn't yeah. show you. But um, I'm going to put some stuff on my Instagram story soon when we finish this. And there's also a clip, which I'm sure Decker and John will help me uh, cutting out and putting up. Um, it says... We'll put, we'll put some edits together from his podcast. We'll put some edits together, small footage for you for your story. Okay. Well, I just want to let the viewers know while we're live, is he made a comment... Um, Irish fucking Hogan, Flannery, Bunda, whatever we want to call the man. Um, <laughs> he said, There's not a lot of men that can come in in a room, Joyce is on the right, Barker's on the left, and hold their own and carry themselves well. And if they don't carry themselves well, they'd be flung out the door with the Valentinos in the rear. Well, in my eyes, that man's just at his words, you know, that is exactly what happened. He come in. You know, he got exposed and he got sent down the road. Um, he got allowed, there's obviously, there's a few people that just said, look, let, let him do what he's doing, let him do his podcast, let him bow out gracefully, leave him too. You know, and then when these women have come up, obviously we can't allow that. So it is what it is. He's done his podcast, we've exposed him, and now we are going to remove him. It's as simple as that. Guy, it's been a pleasure. Decker John, thank you very much for giving yeah, me two victims the opportunity. Is Johnny not coming on, though? No? no, I don't think he is, but we're pushing it in there now, aren't we? We're at 45 minutes, so... Um, yeah, so we'll... Listen, guys, stay tuned for the audio you podcast. Yeah. You know, thank you, guys. we're going to see a lot more. We've got my dad's podcast coming up. I'm sure Dougie and Johnny are going to be back on in the next week or two. Yeah. Um, They'll definitely be on our podcast at my father's. Yeah. You know, they, they'll have a lot. Both of them will have a lot to say. They both got a very good relationship with my father. They had a very good relationship with my father. And they'll both have their own accounts to, to say about him. Um, so we'll all be back very shortly, I assure you that. Nice Decker, to see you, man. Now, pleasure. God bless, mate. God bless, people. Thank you, Thank everybody, you, everybody, for tuning everybody, in. Guys. My name's Decker Heggie on the official All or Nothing podcast. 
and I will see you on the next episode.